Obsidian's not enough. Notion's not enough. Evernote's not enough. No note-taking app is enough. I spent years going from Microsoft Word to Google Docs to Notion, Evernote, Obsidian is what I'm using now, but I've explored Tana and loads of other note-taking apps. And the concept of building a second brain, despite the many conceptual and philosophical gripes I have with the concept, doesn't quite fit into one app. Thiago mentions this in his course, he's mentioned it various times on the internet, but a second brain isn't an app. So when I'm looking at the concept of building a second brain, one app is not enough. Obsidian is great, but what else is there? Just because you can do it in Obsidian, or you can do it in Notion, or you can do it in Tana, doesn't mean you should. I use Zotero as a reference manager because, well, it's a reference managing app, but also it gives me the flexibility that most other tools don't give me. If you don't want to use Zotero, then there's other tools like Readwise and Matter and loads of other stuff out there. But it's about finding the tool right for the job. Then when I'm outside or when I'm on my phone or doing something else, I want something quick, but also something that works with my calendar slash task app. And for me, that's Morgan because it's both a calendar application and a task application. I don't need complicated tasks, but I just need something that's simple that I can tick off in my day. So my second brain isn't Obsidian, it's Obsidian and Zotero and Morgan because of the other features that those apps give me. The next lesson I've learned using Obsidian for the last two years is to actually find a use case. Like, what is the point of using the app that you've chosen. When I started using Notion, I had a point. I was at university and I needed somewhere to put my notes that wasn't Microsoft Word because Microsoft Word just didn't do it for me. And when I switched from Notion to Obsidian, my use case was articles, writing articles, because doing it inside of Notion was far too difficult because one, sources, references, two, footnotes, there aren't any, three, the outline, the outlines at the top rather than at the side, Four, split screens. Notion just doesn't have split screens, which made it a pain to go between references and sources. I'd have to have two tabs up. It, it just became an issue, and Obsidian solved that issue. It was a use case that solved a friction point for me. So I found my use case. I went in with an idea that I want to write up articles. I want to write up research that I'm going into, and I had a specific project in mind. So I started off writing up a research project. Once I found out that it worked, I then expanded into other projects, which is where I now have all of my project management inside of Obsidian from a high level view anyway. The actual actions, again, are still in Morgan. And that is where some of these use cases tie in with the different apps that I'm using. So my expanded use of Obsidian inside of projects links with Morgan in task and project management. Because a lot of the research I do inside of Obsidian requires references and sources, it links directly with Zotero, which is why I use that plugin. And as my use case, is writing rather than project or task or calendar management inside of my notes app, I use Obsidian because Obsidian is a writing, it's a text-based tool with outlines and plugins and split screens, etc. If my use case was more managing multiple people or working with others, then I would use something that's more collaborative like Notion or Mylonote or literally any other collaborative tool that's online. But because I'm personal use, I want speed, I want flexibility, I want extensibility, which Obsidian gives me. The next lesson is to understand the basics of the tool. Most notes apps in the personal knowledge management space have lots of features and jargon. And if you're not that familiar with text, some of the affordances or opportunities for behavior that the tool gives you, you may not be sensitive enough to use. In other words, if you're not familiar with how block IDs work in Obsidian, then you may not block reference. Or if you're not familiar with how Markdown works in Obsidian or how Markdown works in Notion, you may not use hashes to bring in headings. And in Obsidian, I found learning what Markdown is, what exactly Markdown does with the hashes, the dots, the dashes, and all the symbols, finding out what that does actually answered a lot of the questions that I had when it came to writing inside of Obsidian quickly. Then an Obsidian specific term is core plugins, but they're essentially the core features of the application. Core plugins are features of Obsidian. So where in Notion you'd be advised to learn how databases work, how properties work, in Obsidian I would say the same, but there are more options to learn because there are more features inside of Obsidian than Notion. For me, that was understanding how front matter YAML or what's now called properties in Obsidian, learning how the properties work, then learning the difference between the quick switcher and the search and the files and the bookmarks, all of those as core plugins, whether I want to use them or whether I don't. 
unlike most applications, you can turn features off in Obsidian, which ties in directly with the extensibility of the tool. Because it's local on your system, you can do pretty much what you want when it comes to community plugins, or the way it looks, or the way it acts, the way it behaves, where it's stored, where it's synced. And because Obsidian just works, most of the time when it's broken, it's not broken, it's a user error. And in order to solve the user errors, I need to understand where things are stored, how the basics of the app works. I could dive deep into the research, go off on lots of different side tangents, but learn as you build. It sounds really cliche to say, but I would actually suggest not to have a grand plan, a vision, a, an end point or a goal of where you want to be when you start using the tool. It's so easy to say, I want to get to that goal before I start doing research, before I start doing projects, before I start doing X, Y, and Z. But while you're trying to get there, you may change the goal slightly. It may move to the left, move to the right, or it could completely change in a different direction that you weren't expecting, which relates directly into the bulk changes lesson that I found so many times. Once you've set something up, don't bulk change. So don't move everything from folder to folder, move all the tags, change all the metadata or the properties. Don't bulk change until you're consistent with the way that you're using the system. In the past, I've had so many times where I've had to change all the database names, change all the relation properties in Notion, or bulk change all of the files in Obsidian, or only to just have to do it all again a couple of days later because I changed my mind. So instead of saying, this is the goal, this is the endpoint, this is now the system, I just work as I go. So if I want to change something or I want to add something, I do it to that file or those couple of files and see how it goes moving forwards. Then after a week or two weeks, if the fact that there is a difference between old and new files becomes an issue, then I make the changes. So I make sure I give the setup enough time to see if it works or not. But that isn't just, okay, I've made the setup now a week later, it's not working for me, I need to change it. That's, I've set it up and I'm using it. I'm using it inside of practice. I'm doing research or I'm making projects. I'm writing, I'm working on this and seeing how it goes through action rather than setting it, forgetting it, and then saying it's not working because I've done that before. <laughs> I would explain the experience as representative practice. So I'm acting and perceiving at the same time and learning as I go through the constrained environment that I'm working in, but that goes into the science that I research. And the last lesson and the biggest lesson is don't copy. This is one of my biggest gripes with Notion users and using templates, downloading a template and expecting it to work because they have a different system. You can't just expect to copy and paste this into your life. And I think it's the same with every application. Use videos and builds and templates as inspiration, as ideas to use for your own use case. I give out the Obsidian templates not because I want people to use them step by step, but because I want them to take a little bit from it and put it in their own system. And it's not a step by step, you need to follow these instructions. And that's not what the videos are for. The videos are to explain how something works so that you can maybe take that little bit or adapt it in a different way to use for your own practice. And this is where talking with other users becomes really helpful and not even engaging with them, just looking at the community, looking at what people are saying, what things that they're doing, and using that as inspiration to change the way that you're working. So inspiration feeds into talking with others and then talking with others can also lead to inspiration. Most of the lessons I've learned is either looking through the Obsidian Discord and looking through what other people are doing, other tools they're using, other combinations, workflows and things like that, or from when I'm expressing how I use it and other people look at their system and compare the two. So in a recent Discord event that I did in my server, Davos, one of the community members, actually shared their folder system compared to mine, and there was no right and wrong, it was just a different approach. And this is where the shiny new toy syndrome sort of thing comes in and looking at other apps, I look at other apps not because I want to use them most of the time, it's because I want inspiration from looking at the other tools such as Tana and the most recent one being AnyType. The apps themselves don't give me the features or the flexibility that I personally want at the moment, so they don't give me the affordances to work with, but they give me ideas. So the classes I use in my Obsidian came from Tana, and now some of the more refined parented tasks that I'm using in Obsidian comes from any type. But of course, everyone's a little bit different, so I'd be interested to hear what you've learned building in whatever app it is down in the comment section below.